हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू न्यू लेक्चर ऑन हार्ट साउंड दैट इज एस वन इन आर लास्ट क्लास वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ एस वन एंड ऑल्सो सॉफ्ट एस वन कॉसेस इन दिस क्लास लेट अस लर्न अबाउट द कॉसेस ऑफ लाउड एस वन एंड ऑल्सो द splitting of s1 where there will be splitting of s1 so the first cause of loud s1 is presence of tachycardia in tachycardia if you see there is increased heart rate whenever there is increased heart rate there is increased contraction of the ventricles okay this increased contraction of the ventricles will causes loud s1 so any causes which can lead to tachycardia they will cause loud s1 so what are the causes which cause what are the etiology for tachycardia mostly high output states like anemia or thyrotoxicosis where there is tachycardia okay very very or atrioventricular fistula sorry arteriovenous fistula av fistula arterial venous fistula or it can be in pregnancy or paget's disease so these are the different causes for uh, tachycardia in all these and also in uh, exercise so in all these causes there is increased heart rate this increased heart rate will cause loud s1 okay there are also some other causes which can cause loud s1 among them first is Uh, the second one is increased um atrioventricular flow that is if you see if this sorry i'll use brown hmm. yeah if this is the heart okay these are the atrial ventricles whenever the blood flow from atrial ventricles are increased whenever there is increased atrial ventricular flow then there can be a uh, loud s1 because whenever there is lots of blood is moving from atria to ventricles then there is increased ventricular filling because increased av flow this causes increased ventricular filling whenever there is increased ventricular filling because of large amount of blood it there is increased contractions the strength of the contraction increases increased contraction strength so because of that there is loud s1 so what are the causes where there is increased uh, av flow uh, there are two defects where there can be increased atrial ventricular flow one whenever there is atrial septal defects in atrial septal defects the blood from the left atria moves to the left at ventricle sorry left atria moves to the right atria so so this this is one of the cause where there is lots of blood in the left atria this causes increased um contraction of the eighth ventricle thus causing loud s1 so this is atrial septal defects that is one the second cause can be due to increased av valve so if you see this is the i'm sorry here the atrial septal defect is not there but this is the pulmonary vein sorry pulmonary artery aortic aorta whenever there is a connection between pulmonary vein and aorta during that time there is the blood from the uh, aorta it reaches the pulmonary vein and from the palm sorry pulmonary artery the, the blood from the aorta reaches the pulmonary artery from there the blood enters the lungs so from the lungs the blood again come back to the left atria so if you see the blood will again reach the left atria so there is increased blood from the, there is increased blood because the blood from the pulmonary sorry it reaches the left atria i'm sorry this is the thing it reaches the left atria so the blood okay so because of that the blood it is uh, flowing in a circle so as a result there is increased volume in the left atria so this will and also there is increased volume the blood from the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava that is reaching the left atrium and then the uh, sorry right atrium and that reaches the pulmonary veins similarly the blood from the left side of heart also reaches the pulmonary veins so there is increased 
blood flow uh, in the pulmonary veins which is transmitted to increase blood flow to the left atrium and from there to the left ventricle and as a result because of this increased blood flow the, there is loud S1 so this is patent ductus arteriosus so these two can also cause loud S1 now what are the other causes the third cause is prolonged atrioventricular flow that is when the atrioventricular flow is prolonged or you can also say instead of that when the valves are stenosed just think that the valves which are there that is the uh, mitral valve and the tricuspid valve there is stenosis so for the mitral valve and tricuspid valve stenosis the ventricle contracts a lot in order to close these valves so because the valves are stenosed this produces uh, increased uh, loud S1 so mitral stenosis and also tricuspid stenosis but if these stenosed valves are calcified then there will be soft S1 you should remember that very well the fourth cause is uh, in the soft S1 we have learned about prolonged PR interval now here there is shorter PR interval so if the PR interval is shorter PR interval will suggest the, as I have said in my last class, it will suggest the uh, flow of impulse from the sinoatrial node to the atrioventricular node. When this impulse is decreased, so there is decreased uh, impulse transmission. So here if it's short then there is if, if the PR interval is short that is the impulse transmission is increased thus there is loud S1. So these are the different causes for loud S1. Now let us learn about the splitting of the first heart sound. In what causes where there is uh, where, in which causes there can be splitting of S1. So if you see normally M1 and T1 both these come together. Uh, this splitting of S1 can be divided into two types. One, normal splitting. That is, there is M1 first and then there is T1. The second type is reverse splitting. Where there is tricuspid uh, valve will close first and then the mitral valve will close. Okay, so let us learn about each of them so that it becomes easier. So first... The first cause of normal splitting that is in mitral stein, uh, sorry, the normal splitting is a uh, right bundle branch blanc. Think that there is right bundle branch block. So what happens if there is right bundle branch block? This is the heart. Okay. So just think that the impulses, they will... Um, Normally, the impulse which is there, that impulse will start from the sinoatrial node and from there to AV node and from there to bundle of kiss and from there to right bundle, left bundle and from there to Purkinje fibers. So, here there is a block in this right bundle branch. So, as a result, the impulses which will pass, they will pass here, here and as there is a block in the right side, it can't reach the right side, so it goes to the left side, it will uh, you know depolarize the whole left side so because of this depolarization there is closure of mitral valve m1 is seen and then after depolarization if you see this is closed so as a result after depolarization now this has been m1 is closed and then this impulses will reach the uh, atria, sorry, right ventricle now and this leads to the closure of T1. So first you see M1 and then you see T1. Why? Because the right bundle which, which is sending the uh, impulses that is not properly functioning. There is block over there. As a result, there is first stimulation of left ventricle. So impulses from the left ventricle will again reach the right ventricle leading to closure of T1. So there is first mitral closure and then there is tricuspid closure similarly one more condition whenever there is ectopic beats think that there are ectopic beats in the left ventricle there are 
ectopic beads in the left ventricle. So if you see, if this is the thing, it is, it does not, uh, the, um, all this uh, cardiac uh, electrical impulse transmission is normal. But there is some area in the left ventricle which itself works as a pacemaker. And as a result, this will contract the left atrium first. And thus there is M1. And once the contraction of left atrium is over, then the impulses from the left atrium will now transmit to the right atrium. Then there is T1. So there is first M1 which is followed by T1. So this is also seen in ectopic beats in left ventricle. So let us learn. So these are the two causes where there is normal splitting. That is M1 and then T1. Where there is reverse splitting, it's, it's, it's simple. So this, this is correct opposite. Whenever there is left bundle branch block. The pathology is similar. Whenever there is left bundle branch block, then the impulses will be first, they first reach the right, right ventricle and then they reach the left ventricle. So that is left bundle branch block. Similarly, when the ectopics beats are seen in the right ventricle. So, sorry, this is... Yeah, ecto ectopics are seen in the right ventricle. Whenever the ectopics are there in the right ventricle, first there is contraction of right ventricle and then there is contraction of left ventricle. So first there is T1 and then M1. So these are the different causes of reverse splitting of S1. I think you guys have understood about the first heart sound. In my next class, I will explain about the second heart sound. Thank you guys for watching my lecture. If you have any doubts, please comment it in the comment section. Thank you for watching my lecture. Thank you.